that guy right there trying to kill you see at least he had the decency to pause but number five this is a very touchy subject and I assume I'm gonna catch some maybe some heat or something over it but number five is too powerful of a bike the fifth deadly mistake that you can that new riders make on a motorcycle is they buy a motorcycle that is too powerful for them to be able to handle okay uh, I know of a lot of people that start on 600s like a watch out for this guy right here uh, on a 600 like a CBR or an R6 or a 636 or a ZX6R, whatever, okay? That is, for a new rider, way, 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 what's up, fellas? Thanks. Um, too much motorcycle, okay? A, you need to be able to take your time, and I would recommend, and people always say, you're gonna get bored if you buy a 250. You're gonna get bored if you buy a 500. Well, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna get dead if you start on a 600. Or even worse, if you start on a leader bike, on a 1000, like an R1, or a ZX10R, or a CBR1000, anything that's 1000, anything that's 600 is too powerful for you. You don't have the ability, the skill level, the experience, the know-how on how to control those motorcycles. Are they fun? They're the most fun you can have other than having sex, okay? But it is too powerful of a motorcycle. You're going to get hurt, and if you don't get hurt, then you're lucky, you know? That's good. I don't want anybody to get hurt when they're out riding because this is supposed to be fun and I assure you it's so much fun. It could be a lot of fun. Like you can have, it's therapeutic if you will. Um, it's just fun. Like riding a bike is supposed to be like stupid fun. I don't want to have to be worried about, you know, I'm going too fast on a bike that, you know, you barely twist the throttle and you're going 100 miles an hour or something. That's stupid. Like that kind of power. And I'm not judging anybody. Like I rode 600, you know, 1000s. I rode leader bikes for years. Okay. And I've been riding for, I was five years old when I started. So I'm 38 now. I've been riding for 33 years. I can manhandle any motorcycle you put in front of me. But you know what? Those new ones, I assure you, they still would kind of make me uncomfortable. Okay? They're putting down 150, 60, 70, 80, 100, almost 200 horsepower to the wheel. Like, the power to weight ratio is stupid. It is so ridiculous. So, I think I was on five and I got on this rant or, or this, this tangent, but too powerful of a bike is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make as a new rider you need to start on a 250 if you purchase it correctly you won't lose any money you'll be able to flip it in six months a year and move up to a 500 or a 450 or a 550 or something you know stay away from the crotch rockets those things like you know what I, i'm not going to tell you to stay away from it because it's none of my business but i have lost so many friends Two of my close relatives, one was on a Hayabusa, the other one was on a CBR 1000 RR, both of them. Speed was a factor. Um, it's not worth it. Like, it's not worth it. Look, I'm, I'm going 65 miles an hour. I'm cruising. Look at the distance between me and that car in front of me. Like, I'm having a good old time, okay? So, I don't need to go 160. I don't need to go 120. You have to understand that 600s, you know, the... the you know, the crotch rockets that are 600s and the leader bikes, those are legal street bikes. Uh, I'm sorry, race bikes. Those are literally, they're race bikes that are street legal. They put lights on them, blinkers, a, ta a, a tail light, and guess what? You're on a, on a race bike. Now, that may sound like a lot of fun, but you don't, as a new rider, you do not have... What's up, bro? See, there goes one. That was a CBR. You don't have the experience to handle one of those bikes. And I think that guy was in shorts. Can you believe it? Like, if you fall at 60 and you're wearing shorts, you're not going to have a leg anymore. Like, your, your skin's coming off. Okay? So, 
that's going to be another topic I'd talk about. Don't be a squid, okay? I don't care who he was or who he isn't or whatever, you know, to each their own, but don't be a squid. Like, wear proper gear. Look, I'm not wearing a jacket if I fall. My skin's coming out of my arm. It's coming off my arm. Now, I wear jeans and boots, but my upper body is going to take a beating, okay? Now, uh, that's going to be another video, actually, we talk about. All right, so, number five, do not buy a bike that you do not understand and you know you're not going to be able to to handle so start with the 250 work your way up to it to, to you know a, a more powerful bike you know 500 on a 500 you can hit 100 miles an hour i assure you you don't need to go faster than that like you're there you stop having fun after a while it, it gets a little scary i can manhandle anything and i still go in 140 150 you're in the city even if you're in the country unless you're on a racetrack that's what those bikes are for okay they're race bikes don't get sold at a dealership and hey bro you need a 1000 your friends are always going to tell you hey bro starting the 600 just starting a 1000 you're going to get bored that guy is not your friend okay that guy is you know that's the old that's a, that's i don't know what you call it peer pressure or whatever but that's just stupid like if your friend is like hey bro it's just starting a 1000 you're gonna get bored you're gonna pick it up right away you know what no you're not you're gonna freaking die it's not worth it okay so number five uh do not buy a bike that is too powerful and you're not going to be able to control okay number six guys numero seis on the deadly mistakes that new riders make number six is two up too fast okay now what that means is you've been riding for three four months and you think that you know how to ride and you've dodged a couple of bullets you know debris on the road or maybe a car that was trying to kill you or you were able to swerve out of an emergency situation or something and your girlfriend is like or your boyfriend if you're into that kind of stuff do you What's up? do you but uh, your girlfriend is like take me for a ride uh, you bought this bike and it was supposed to be for the both of us blah 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 or you're trying to impress a chick and you're like hey I ride a bike look at me I'm so cool let's go for a ride and she says you know what she probably won't even question it and you throw her on the back of your bike and you've only been riding for a month or two or six uh, that is suicide for the both of you you are going to hurt yourself you're going to hurt her and you're not even going to know what happened that when you put a passenger on the back of your bike the entire feeling changes. The bike feels heavier, which that's the only positive thing to riding with a passenger, is that it, the, the back tire gets a little stickier, if you will, because there's more traction, because you know there's more weight on the bike. But this, doing this right here that I'm doing with a passenger can literally throw you off the bike, okay? It changes the entire thing. What's up, bro? So it changes the entire dynamic. You, you need to be able to get experience. I probably rode for about four or five years. No joke. Come on, bro, I need to speed up. I want to hit this turn. Uh, before, I threw a passenger. I threw a passenger on the back of my bike. So, yeah, number six deadly mistake man this guy sucks he killed my curve i should have passed him earlier uh number six is do uh, i'm sorry two up too fast okay i lost my train of thought there get out of the way bro jesus two up too fast okay take your time before you throw a passenger in the back of your bike you need to develop the skill oh, you don't bump this or you throw a passenger in the back of your bike. Like, it changes things, I promise you. Uh, give it a year or so before, I don't know if you can hear me, it got really windy for me, but 
give it a, give it some time before you throw a passenger and it, it's not fun when they when you guys fall guys I promise you it's not fun at all like it's not glamorous you don't slide like in the movies see if I fall at this speed I'm dead that's 95 miles an hour happy on those turns <laughs> but uh yeah too up too fast not a good idea guys don't do it take your time develop the skill and then throw your chick in the back of the bike Siete. number seven guys on the deadly mistakes that new riders make number seven is in my opinion swerving in and out of cars like a jerk off you guys have seen them we have all seen them and to this day they still irritate me it still makes me cringe when i see them i'm going 60 70 80 maybe on the highway in my car and i see these guys zoom by me okay or they're oh shoot uh swerving in and out of traffic like you know they go between or they or they do the lane splitting thing you know you're not supposed to lane split and um it's against the law i think in texas now do whatever you want guys but um number seven do not be an idiot oh look at this guy well, it's legal for him to make a turn there and i would have slammed right into that trailer number seven guys take this turn here. That was fun. I love the turns like that. But number seven, guys, swerving in and out of traffic, okay? You do not want to be swerving in and out of traffic. Um, I don't care if you're in the city. Like, it's dangerous. If those people, you can just go on YouTube and a lot of accidents have happened because people are swerving in and out of traffic and a car doesn't see you and shifts lanes you know or moves one lane over or taps the brake and guess what it's over the show is it you're done for okay remember you, this is supposed to be fun when you're going too fast or just being you know a little careless you can feel it this thing this bike will speak to you if you listen to it that may sound kind of like like what are you talking about right but if you listen to the bike it will speak to you it will tell you you're going too fast you're taking that turn too fast you know you can just feel it and the more you ride it the louder the voice becomes and I know that's going real deep with it, guys, but I promise you, if you take your time, you're gonna be able to ride for many, many, many years to come. You're gonna have a good old time. You'll be able to ride with your lady or with your chick or your wife or whatever in the back, and both of you can have fun. But if you do not take your time, you're not gonna, this is not gonna be fun. It's not fun when people fall and your limbs come right off. It's not fun when you, fall and you have you know at right now we're going 60 it looks it feels to me like we're standing still because i'm used to riding fast but i've been riding for 30 plus years but it's not fun when you fall and your skin comes off okay it's not fun when you get hurt or you leave loved ones behind or something because you know you because of a moment of like you you had a little too much you, fun and you lost it you know I, I just you saw in this video a couple times how I got a little you know trigger happy but it, there was no cars around okay like I'm not swerving in and out of traffic that is just a stupid idea it's not a good idea so there are the seven deadly mistakes that new riders tend to make um, when they get on a new bike or when they get on when they start riding I should say okay you need to be able to take your time develop the skill it's gonna take time but it'll be worth it you'll have fun in the meantime go have a good old time and you know I should probably add one 
do not ever drink and ride. So, yeah, not a good idea. All right, so if this is your first time, guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. I would appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. Peace.